welcome to Fourth Right. My sister and I grew up in a Coast Guard family. My father made the U.S. Coast Guard motto, Semper Paratus, our family motto, always ready, which is one reason why my mother has insisted for the five years I've been writing a weekly newspaper column that I should have a spare column ready to go just in case. Thursday columns are due Wednesday afternoon, and Wednesdays are writing day on the ranch. But between the goats, the dogs, and the fire district pager, I have plenty of opportunities for interruptions. So this June, I did finally follow through and write that spare column, and on November 17th, I needed it. 50 head of goats went walkabout on me, and on the highway, two hours before deadline, I had to use the in case of emergency and oh my, I'm not done yet column. The theme was a timeless one. People have been complaining about tax collectors for millennia. Published on Thursday, November 18th, 2021, in the Spokesman Review, here's the column. Death and taxes and the efficiency of the IRS. While the only thing certain in life may be death and taxes, it is also certain you can't get blood out of a turnip or money out of a man who died with no assets. Skepticism in the ability of the federal government to run efficiently is a conservative touchstone. There are good quality civil servants working for the federal government, but they are trapped in the systemic incompetency that is the hallmark of bureaucracy everywhere. Like, for example, in the Internal Revenue Service. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi have been selling the Build Back Better boondoggle as budget neutral. Experts are already projecting the Congressional Budget Office score will be disappointing. All the new temporary programs will not be free, and especially not since it counts on the IRS cracking down on taxpayers to help pay for it. They won't be collecting from my brother-in-law. Kevin died in November 2019 after many years of struggling with mental illness that finally left him homeless. His only income was disability payments after a medical separation from federal civil service. It's two years later and the IRS still hasn't figured out he's not paying. We put a mail forwarding order on Kevin's last address of record so we could tie up loose ends. That mostly meant sending copies of death certificates to creditors, including the tax collectors. The U.S. Postal Service must have informed the IRS of the new address and the IRS sent Kevin a certified letter in January of 2020. We returned the envelope with a death certificate and explanation. They sent a letter acknowledging they had received his correspondence and would get back to us in 90 days. In May 2020, the IRS sent him a letter requesting payment in full, including penalties and interest. Kevin easily ignored it. So did we. At the end of June, another letter arrived by a certified mail threatening Kevin with seizure of all assets, notifying him of his right to a due process hearing, and requesting confirmation of address and contact information. Trying to be helpful, I returned the form with another copy of the death certificate and a note saying his address was the urn from the funeral home sitting on his brother's dresser. It was a handwritten and honest statement with a touch of dark humor to catch the eye of any human agent paying even a modicum of attention to the job. Somebody did notice, sort of. They left out the part about the urn, but they did update the address. The next letter was addressed to Kevin care of his brother, albeit with no mention of the urn or the dresser. After thanking Kevin for his correspondence, the letter stated, case closed, currently not collectible. This looked like progress until reading the next paragraph. We temporarily closed your collection case for the tax periods above because we determined that you can't pay the money you owe at this time. Temporarily, at this time? There's nothing temporary about dying. It's a pretty permanent condition. The letter went on, quoting the IRS, however, you still owe $1,756.86 to the IRS for the tax periods above. This amount includes applicable penalties and interest calculated to August 21, 2021. You'll receive annual reminder notices and will continue to charge applicable penalties and interest until you pay the amount you owe in full, end quote. Apparently, the IRS is planning to Lazarus-like resurrect Kevin, cure his disability, and find him a job so he can pay his back taxes. Meanwhile, we have been warned to expect a letter to Kevin in care of his brother every year, reminding us that Kevin is still dead and still a victim of the systemic incompetence of bureaucracies. The experience has not enhanced my confidence in the IRS to efficiently pursue tax deadbeats. Everyone has had at least one experience with a particularly unhelpful government agency. This column is not to bash government employees, or at least not all of them. In the private sector, incompetence is rewarded with dismissal. In the public sector, incompetence is too often laterally transferred to somebody else's department or internally isolated. Either way, the competent are left picking up the workload. 
The Idaho State Tax Commission managed to close their tax lien after receiving a single email with an electronic copy of the death certificate. Congratulations to the competent staff of the Idaho State Agency, whoever you are. The IRS could learn a thing or two from you. It was a, it was a column that got a number of positive responses from folks. Um, one of them from someone who also went on to say that she wished that I got as much space in the newspapers as they give to Leonard Pitts. That was, that was a nice compliment. Um, one from Dr. J, who actually put another, uh, another point on what the real problem is there with the IRS. It's not just about the competency of people. He alludes to that in his writings, that awarding jobs and contracts to people to return a favor or to curry some future favor is a longstanding practice. And he's right. It's, many of those appointments are used as, a, as a, a reward for some political favor. Uh, he goes on to say, to some degree, the IRS being a federal bureaucracy has become an avenue for big sticking political opponents and their supporters. In other words, using it as a weapon. And the actual and useful work of the IRS is being lost in activities it was never designed to address. Your tale, however, suggests an example of my second gripe, automation. And this is the point that Dr. J make that's made that's pretty pertinent to so many bureaucracies, public and private. The inability of programmed automated systems and processes to do the work of live employees. Automation is okay when it works, but when it doesn't, it inevitably makes mountains out of molehills. I suspect your travail to at least some degree is due to the use of automation. And I think he has a good point there. And he went on with an example of how he's gotten caught up in that. Um, he points out the cost savings assumed in machines doing the work of expensive people. And you, there are, what are the unnecessary costs in the case of IRS's continued pursuit of these, my brother-in-law's back taxes. At some point, it becomes ridiculous. And I think he's got a point there that we can become the, we can become the slaves to the automation. Um, from another woman who wrote in, um, she said that what you're calling incompetence in the IRS must be called what it truly is, lack of funds to employ more competent personnel, lack of funds to update systems to process said, informa said information, uh, basically the ability for the IRS to keep up. Um, she points to uh, tax loopholes, incredibly skewed toward high earners, says they are so co complicated that no normal person can understand them. And actually, I agree with her. The tax code is more complicated than any one person can understand. If it didn't run to more than 70,000 pages, the IRS wouldn't need as many people on staff to do their jobs well and without frustration, frustration for them as well as for taxpayers. And taxpayers wouldn't have to pay accountants to keep them out of trouble. Like, I'm not sure it's possible for anybody to not be nailed on some infraction of the tax code. It's so complex and so dense. Um, and she did agree with me that the tax code is a problem, um, says that it is what we either have to change it or deal with it, neither of which is being done right now. We agreed on that. Um, she goes on to say, enforcing the tax code, no matter how expensive that would be, would be a huge boon for the state of the nation financially. Are you against collecting what is owed to the government? Personally, it makes me so angry to see the burden on the middle class as opposed to the burden on the upper class. I feel they are flipping the IRS the burden, and daring them to come after them. Well, this brings up a, a, a question that many people have raised, a constant debate over what does fair mean? What is your fair share? And how come the rich aren't paying their fair share? Well, I'm not opposed to the government collecting the taxes that they are due. I mean, generally, we should be all be following the rules and trying to do that, as complex, complex, complex as it is. But the tax burden doesn't fall on the middle class. When you look at, at uh, charts that are put together off of the IRS, a database by any number of institutions. You can Google and find any number of illustrations. You know, half of taxpayers pay 97% of all income taxes. I mean, that's, they're already paying, you know, if everybody's fair share, you know, how are you going to define fair share? We actually have uh, the bottom, the chart that I'm looking at from the Tax Foundation, the bottom 50%. <laughs> The bottom 50% don't pay taxes. Um, actually, the bottom 25%, the bottom, yeah, it's, we're not, the top 1% are, are already paying more than a fair share. And the only way to really address that, to get past those loopholes, to really make that feel fair, one way is just to eliminate all that complexity and go to a flat tax. And as it turns out, uh, Jenny and I agreed on, on the flat tax. Um, she offered an, another 
horror story of her own. She's had her own problems with a, with a fairly simple problem in her own family. Um, but has gone on to insist that they need more personnel, including personnel who can cut through the tap, tax loophole bullcrap and get to the true bottom line. Simplify the tax code. I agree 100% and have always felt this way. How much money did you make this year? You owe us 5% of that. No deductions, no adjustments, no exemptions, no excuses. So this is a, from someone who is kind of a naysayer to probably to where I come from in a lot of politics, but it turns out we agreed on something, that, that in that fair share to get everybody in this together uh, in, to simplify, a flat tax would be a way to go. Those frustrations from the IRS are pretty ubiquitous. A lot of folks sent me stories of their own run-ins. Uh, one of the problems is that, that politicians over the years have used the tax code as both a carrot and a stick. And, and all of those uh, rules just accumulate like barnacles on the bottom of a ship. Um, and, and as long as the tax code is like that, it's going to be a timeless source of such tales. I agree on a flat tax. I do have a postscript to uh, provide to this, to this forthright about those goats that got out on the highway and, and forced me to uh, use my emergency, my emergency column. Uh, I have to praise God for his perfect timing. I'm sitting, standing there watching the goats, trying to figure out how I'm going to get them corralled. And two soccer moms from Christian Heritage School with kids in the car who are all soccer players, dressed for soccer, dressed to be running around like two-legged border collies, um, came to help me. They were from families that had worked with goats before, so they knew how to herd without, without spooking them. Um, the oldest boy was adept at driving a four-wheeler. I had him get the four-wheeler, put a bale of hay on the back, kind of lead them while I'm, I'm pushing on the sides and the rest of them are around the back. We got them all moved out of the yard of my neighbor and back into the pasture where they were supposed to be um, with just enough daylight left to get the fence back up. And... Uh, just enough time to tweak my emergency column and get it turned in. It wasn't too hard to tie it to current events because death and taxes are always, are always with us. Uh, my editor and I thank you, Mom, for pushing me to have that emergency column. Semper paratus. <laughs>